Hello and very warm welcome to all of you in this edition of Public Forum. I am Anurag Puneta with you. Today we are going to talk about the France-India relations uh, that have been traditionally very close uh, and friendly and both countries have a special relationship uh, with each other. So much so that by August uh, last year, uh, experts started calling France as India's new best friend uh, replacing Russia. Two guests have joined me, Dr. Shyam Chalia, uh, international affairs expert, have joined me. Very welcome to the show, Dr. Chalia. My second guest is from Jawaharlal Nehru University, Dr. Sheetal Sharma, international affairs expert. Very welcome to the show, Dr. Sheetal, uh, to you as well. Dr. Chalia, your understanding about this growing uh, convergence of interest between the two nations, uh, uh, as Dr. Sheetal is saying, because of the shared values and uh, shifting global order, uh, the two nations are coming closer. Yeah, Anurag, you know, France is special. Uh, in fact, Prime Minister Narendra Modi coined the term, uh, the, the phrase infra, I-N-F-R-A. And he said the whole world is talking about I-N plus F-R-A. And he said it's like an, it was like a Freudian slip or intended. He said it's actually an alliance. I think India Mr. Modi is, is the master of the you know, We are barely of alliances and we don't talk about alliance with really. So uh, on paper, it is strategic partnership, the oldest and the most robust, but also uh, de facto like an alliance. And uh, that shows the level of uh, trust. And uh, I think some of this has to do uh, with the fact that, you know, France has had um, uh, important island territories in the Indian Ocean region, uh, in Reunion, Mayotte, mm. uh, Kerguel. And these are the important, you know, uh, places where they have uh, bases. Uh, and they want to sustain and retain those somehow. You said it is like a post-imperial power. You know, these were acquired uh, many, many uh, centuries ago, mm -hmm. but France wants to hold on to them. And um, it cannot do so on its own because it's geographically far away in Europe, in the heart of Europe. So they want more partnerships in this region to secure them. And in fact, President Macron went to Reunion Island um, mm. some months ago, and he said that we want to preserve our territories from uh, interference and hegemony. And there is no, there's a clear indication they're worried about the Chinese, uh, you know, uh, penetrating these regions and, and trying to surround them and trying to take over these places. Because, you know, in the name of countering piracy, what has happened is the Chinese uh, PLA Navy has come all the way up to the Gulf of Aden yeah. across the French territories. And uh, increasingly, they're menacing the French, uh, you know, mm. uh, not so large uh, naval presence there. Mm. So France needs India uh, to be able to. Uh, you know, team up with other players. And of course, like Sheetal was saying, you know, democracy, Republican values for France, okay. these mean a lot. They're very passionate about this. You know, they define their identity on those grounds. So France is also pushing the whole European Union to relook at Indo-Pacific. You know, recently, even the Germans came on board. They said, we have now signed on to the EU's Indo-Pacific outlook. France was the one pushing the Germans. Germans were a little bit reluctant. They don't have any military presence much in this yeah, region. That's right. Now the Europeans as a whole are talking about how they need to be permanently present in the Indo-Pacific and strengthen India and do more with India. So our logistics agreement, the one you mentioned with uh, France is very central, you know, for our Navy to be able to also uh, have access points, mm -hmm. the submarines you're mentioning, increasingly the Chinese are coming in through stealth, you know, under okay. the water. So these areas, I think there's a lot of convergence now. And of course, counter-terrorism, like you mentioned, yeah. that's another big point now because France has become a victim uh, in the last five years. They have faced multiple attacks from ISIS and ISIS-inspired groups. Pakistani um, uh, immigrant uh, went on a knife for a stabbing incident in Paris uh, as a result of the Charlie Hebdo uh, trials. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So I think uh, increasingly they want intelligence cooperation also. And in fact, the Europeans, the Europol, which is their, you know, joint uh, policing and intelligence network mm -hmm. is wants to coordinate more with uh, our CBI and uh, RAW. So I think that uh, linkages are now getting stronger because we want to contain this menace in the whole region. And uh, so what is happening in Europe is not unconnected to what is happening in uh, Sri Lanka or in Maldives mm. or uh, in Bangladesh. So that is where, you know, we are seeing the connections more. And I think we want to emphasize this because at the end of the day, France and India cannot, you know, on their own, okay, achieve okay, all okay. our national security okay. and geopolitical goals. We need this cooperation. And of course, the defense, you, you talked about defense sales. Mm. We are a big buyer of French, uh, mm. uh, you know, defense equipment. That's right. That's Even right. nuclear energy is another area where, you know, we have done a lot 
the Jaitapur plant, unfortunately, it's delayed. It's supposed to be built by Arriva, the French company. So mm. they have, they, for them, it's also a big market opportunity. And when Macron came, that was his point. You know, he addressed the people of India directly and said, you are our biggest. And for the French, it, they want to bring the whole EU to us. That's important because France is a leader of EU. So it's not only bilateral. For us, the India-EU connection is also being strengthened through the medium of France. Okay. Then what will happen, Dr. Cholia, in the, in the Indo-Pacific or let's say the Indian Ocean, uh, when in a tussle of the world domination between the US and China is going on and probably the France is trying to leverage its position and um, uh, offer an alternative arrangement to other middle powers like India uh, or probably uh, other middle powers of the, of the region uh, as its commitment to multipolarity. Because if the countries don't want to go in either camp or the China or the US, probably the France can offer an alternative. And that is why France has claimed to be the legitimate actor belonging to this region, Indian Ocean region or the Indo-Pacific. Yeah, uh, Anurag, you know, France, the, historically, they have had this Gaullist tradition from Charles de Gaulle. Hmm. The belief that even though they are part of NATO, and even though they are part of the US-led alliance, hmm. transatlantic alliance, hmm. they've always believed in a kind of a notion of their own grandeur and greatness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they also believe that they are the natural leaders of the EU, along hmm. with, with the Germans, of course. Hmm. And uh, they always think in terms of uh, you know, sovereign autonomy or strategic uh, autonomy from the US, mm. even though they're part of uh, NATO. Mm. So um, the Macron, Emmanuel Macron in particular, has been uh, pushing hard for, you know, the EU to become an independent actor fully in defense, security and foreign policy. Yeah. So even though on paper they have a common, you know, a strategic and foreign policy doctrine going back decades, mm. uh, in practice they've all been divided. So Macron right now, because Angela Merkel of Germany is on her way out and Germany, we don't know how what the new leadership will emerge. Hmm. So Macron is trying to assume a kind of a continental leadership role okay. to steer the whole EU uh, in new directions so that it remains relevant. Because what is clear is, you know, the, the big geopolitical contestation now is between China and the US yeah, yeah. in the Indo-Pacific. Hmm. So the Europeans do not want to be left out of this piece of the you know, a global puzzle. Mm. And so they are increasingly moving in, in the direction. They are geographically far away, but how can they position their assets? How can they build uh, alliances or strategic partnerships? That's where India becomes very central for them. And, uh, you know, France, uh, I think ultimately what they would want is the balance, you know, in the, in the world. And uh, plus, I think they are very keen on this democracy aspect, as we were saying before. And for them, increasingly, they say India is the only hope Okay. Because France uh, had colonized Vietnam also, historically. Hmm. Uh, but Vietnam, you know, is a one-party state. Um, so uh, they have linkages with Vietnam going back uh, decades. But hmm. the point is, um, they are not able to exert the same kind of influence uh, like they have with India because of the common shared values. Hmm. So I think sometimes when the leaders, when Narendra Modi and Emmanuel Macron, when they... Um, Praise the fact that you know we are republics. Mm. Uh, people don't. The, the non-specialists may not get the point. They may think this is just a you know platitude, and which all leaders keep on saying that we have shared values. Mm. But actually, here it matters because you know do domestically in France uh, right now, this whole terrorism uh, epidemic that has been spreading there yeah, is linked yeah. to their image as a secular republic. You know, okay. and they are fighting for it, and they want to challenge some of these extreme jihadist ideologies, and they know that only India in the region and in the world. By the way, Ch France and India are the only two, uh, France is the only permanent member of the uh, UN Security Council that's been consistently with India, India on the issue of the comprehensive convention against uh, terrorism, which yeah, India has right. been advocating for a long time in the United Nations. Mm. So you see the convergences. I think um, Russia is there, like you mentioned, but because of the Chinese-Russian you know, closeness to counter the US, mm. uh, increasingly it does look like you, you cannot say that Russia is less important for us today and France is more, but definitely, ultimately, I think France can play a role, uh, if not equivalent to Russia, but at least, uh, you know, as a close substitute for us to have uh, an important uh, strategic ally or a partner in the Western world who will always advocate for us and will push for our cause with the EU and even with the US. Dr. Cholia, I still remember a couple of weeks ago when the France was in the middle of the domestic crisis when this insane person beheaded one teacher and um, Emmanuel Macron had to take some st uh, stern action uh, 
मुस्लिम वर्ल्ड स्पेशली द मिडल ईस्ट केम हार्ड ऑन हिम इंडियन प्राइम मिनिस्टर और इंडियन गवर्नमेंट सम हाउ सपोर्टेड हिम Uh, which was not liked by the indian diplomats as well i mean that was quite unlikely as for the diplomacy is concern uh, i mean this is the growing uh, bonhomie or the shared values or or the, like, the uh, convergence of the interest that probably the india uh, came in support of emmanuel macron yes you know uh, the same countries that have been uh, promoting uh, political islam worldwide and islamism and extremism mm. like turkey Malaysia these are the ones and Pakistan these are the ones that Macron is battling right now mm. you know Macron has openly challenged Erdogan of Turkey mm. uh, and has said that there is a problem of radicalism mm. uh, in Islamic countries and they need to resolve it okay. because all these killers you are talking about the ones who carried out the horrific beheadings mm. one came uh, one came from uh, Chechnya Yeah, and uh, the other uh, was also an immigrant, and even the Pakistani who went on a stabbing spree mm. was an immigrant. So there is an issue um, with radicalization okay. back home. In fact, the father of the Pakistani who uh, stabbed uh, French people on the streets in Paris yeah, yeah. said that we are going to celebrate him as a brave heart and a hero That's because right. he avenged the blasphemy. of the prophet yeah. so these are they are spreading extremely negative image of islam itself so i think our prime minister was right mm. in supporting uh, france in the hour of need okay. emmanuel macron uh, said that i sometimes i feel lonely because only i am speak speaking up openly against this spreading uh, virus okay. Uh, okay. Of, okay. of jihadism and extremism okay. but in narendra modi he has got a strong ally so That's i think right. there is total except even in india everybody mm. believes that france has stood for us through thick and thin and we should do uh, whatever we can for them uh, in terms of cooperation one area which people forget is the fatf you know the financial action task that's, force that's right. against terrorism where pakistan has been put in the dock multiple times and shamed france is one of the strongest um, partners with india in fatf to corner pakistan yeah, so yeah. i think the you know radicals who are spreading hatred like uh, erdogan and mahathir mohammad of malaysia yeah, these yeah. people need to be put in their place and i think france and india a uh, developed okay, western okay, country okay, okay, okay. and a democratic developing country together we can challenge this so that there is legitimacy in this cause it is not a western so probably agenda that's growing it's convergence a growing convergence of, uh, of interest of pushing the two countries coming closer i'm 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 sorry i'm going to stop you because uh, the time is not allowing me to go further uh, thank you very much uh, dr cholia for joining me and thank you very much dr sheetal uh, for uh, talking to us